Hello, everyone. Hello, hello. Good afternoon. I was going to say good afternoon. Good evening. Uh, an evening flying display from air this evening. Uh, looking forward to bringing you that, which starts in about half an hour's time. Um, if you're not familiar with Planes TV, hello, my name's Ian. I run Planes TV, a company that's uh, been running, well, the family have been producing air show stuff for 34 years. My father's just stood over here and um, started it way back then. And we enjoy every minute of it. We're all aviation enthusiasts. There's three of us here today, Adrian, myself, and Andy downstairs mixing at the moment. We'll have a little switcheroo in a little while because I'm going to enjoy spending the day in the trailer tonight. So I'll be vision mixing for you. What am I going to be vision mixing? So we're kicking off with the guys from Gravity. Somewhere over there. So we're orientated out this way towards the sea. And that's where the flying displays will take place, of course. But the Gravity guys, I'm not actually sure where they're going to be uh, flying. But uh, got a good view from up here. I'm pretty confident that we'll pick them up wherever they are. Um, so the Gravity guys kick things off. We're then expecting the Auto Jare, uh, the Typhoon we will have this evening, and the Airborne Pyrotechnics guys. We'll also have a, a night illumination of a couple of hot air balloons over here. I keep sort of pointing this way, that way. Hopefully Adrian's got a shot of the balloons being set up in the little arena over here. Um, that may not sound like much. We're lighting up some balloons. Well, at dusk, you know, those burners really do stand out and they're going to be lighting up all of the surroundings. That's going to be quite a beautiful thing to enjoy. So, yeah, those uh, handful of displays we're looking forward to bringing you in just a little while. Um, what was I going to run through? We've got the running order. Uh, we're live on YouTube both today and tomorrow. One o'clock tomorrow, roundabout. We'll be kicking off um, very many more displays, uh, including things like the Red Arrows, uh, the Gazelle Squadron. Um, I think what else we've got. Uh, let's try and bring it up so I can actually tell you. So, yeah, Gazelle Squadron, Team Raven as well. They'll be joining up together. That'll be nice. Stripe Master Pair, Chinook, OV-10 Bronco. Two Spitfires from the Battle of Britain Memorial Flight, the Red Devils, the Auto Gyro, which we'll see this evening and the Airborne Pyrotechnics tomorrow as well, without the Pyros. Then Gazelle Formation, uh, the Gazelle Squadron just playing in their own right. Uh, Team Starlings, uh, the SE5 replica, uh, Rolls-Royce Heritage pair. So I think that's uh, Mustang and Spitfire we saw at Bournemouth last week. And then Typhoon and the Red Arrows closing the display tomorrow. So going to be action-packed, so make sure you are subscribed here on YouTube. Give this video a like if you <laughs> if you like it and you'd uh, like to support Planes TV and encourage other people to find it. That helps the YouTube algorithm find us. And just trying to bring up the chat, although the Wi-Fi is being rubbish, which is a bit concerning because that's associated with the signal that I'm using to stream to you. So that's uh, always good fun to uh, have that to worry about just as we're going live. Um, the the um, upcoming shows so. We're live today and tomorrow from air. Next week is going to be pretty uh, busy for us. We're down to Jersey uh, on Thursday, uh, live broadcasting here on YouTube, same YouTube channel. So if you're subscribed, you might get a little notification to see that. Then the show uh, next weekend, we are live on PTV On Demand. So watch.planestv.com, that's our subscription service. It's a website at watch.planestv.com. That costs £10 per month the next weekend we'll be bringing you the Duxford Battle of Britain Air Show. So that's the, the big show at Duxford really each year. Uh, skies full of Spitfires and Hurricanes commemorating the uh, Battle of Britain. So if you're signing up, you'll have access to that next weekend. And of course, our back catalogue of shows. I mentioned we've been running for 34 years. Very much of that back catalogue is available on that subscription service for you to view. And we're coming up here to Scotland at this time of year reminded me of the times we used to spend up here at the RF Lucas Air Show. So around, you know, September, Battle of Britain weekend air show. Um, and very many of those Lucas programs are available on that streaming service. And I was digging through the hard drives to find an interesting clip and I couldn't resist. Uh, regular viewers will be bored of me playing Vulcan videos, but I couldn't resist sharing this clip of the Vulcans display at Lucas in 2012. Everyone looking to the east the arrival of the mighty Avro Vulcan.
with a Vulcan took to the air for the first time back in 1952. So he's actually sharing a Diamond Jubilee with Her Majesty the Queen. And indeed at the coronation fly past Royal Air Force Marham the following year, 1953, one Vulcan participated in that fly past. There was only one airworthy at the time, the initial prototype. It's almost square, 97 feet long, 99 feet wide, and would normally con contain a crew of five, a pilot, co-pilot, air electronics officer, navigator radar, and navigator plotter. operating from the airfield here today. You can see that Captain Keb Rumans has lowered the undercarriage, the aircraft configured for landing. So not quite the end of the Vulcan display this afternoon. Just one more opportunity this afternoon to admire this quite amazing piece of great British engineering. and very welcome fly past by B-52 Strato Fortress from the United States Air Force. Well, that nice clip from Lucas in 2012, the Vulcan display followed by the B-52 display. So another Cold War bomber and of course still in service today, expecting the B-52 to go on for very many years to come. Um, but yeah, nice to see those iconic bomber aircraft together at Lucas in 2012. It's 10 years since we covered the last Lucas Air Show, 2013. I've got a clip of that as well, but I might tease that one for uh, tomorrow's live broadcast so if you fancy seeing how the very last Lucas Air Show closed um, I'll play that out tomorrow or of course if you're in a rush you can sign up on the watch.planestv.com service uh, subscription service giving access to our back catalogue of programmes not all of them I always promise this every year that I'll spend the winter digitising tapes in the best possible quality and um, sharing those earlier programmes because not all of them are on that service but we are gradually making them available so if you join the email newsletter, send that out once a week. And if you've spotted something missing from the service that you'd really like on there, I'll hop on the uh, hop on the decks. The VHS, well, not it was SVHS in the early days actually, but then the the other broadcast standards we've used get capturing those. There's a beautiful sight here. Get Adrian to move around and uh, show some of the scenes. We can show you around the site here a little bit. Um, so that camera is clear, Dad. You crack on and uh, show people the lovely sunset that we can see. I can see that 
Paul in uh, Belgium is also enjoying uh, similar weather. So it's very good to hear. It's quite a busy air show weekend this. We, we've stayed, okay, we've gone 450 miles away from the office, but we're uh, in the same United Kingdom. Um, lots of people over on the continent. So Adam, who was uh, presenting last weekend's Bournemouth air show, uh, is out in France. And I know plenty of people in Belgium uh, for the show out there. Some good, and yeah, sounds like the weather everywhere is pretty good for air shows, which is not always a given at this time of year, so I'll take it. Um, speaking of lots of air shows going on, we have lots of action coming our way uh, this next seven, eight days, ten days. So next week we'll be uh, live from Jersey on Thursday. That will come out on YouTube, so that flying display in the afternoon of Thursday. Uh, then we have a separate team, myself and Andy are heading out to Ostrava, uh, NATO days in, in Czechia for, um, well, we're sort of part of the live broadcast, which goes out on YouTube as well, which you'll find. So our cameras uh, providing, being provided into that uh, live broadcast. But our main um, live broadcast next weekend will be the Ducks of Battle of Britain Air show uh, streamed on our streaming service. So plenty of action to come on Planes TV, some of it here on YouTube. So do make sure to subscribe. And I'll settle for some more of uh, this weather. It's absolutely magnificent, as you can see. Um, the beach actually closed. Now, that has a slight benefit to us in that we can bring the display axis slightly closer to well, where we're positioned at the moment. So you'll see some of those marker boys out there, perhaps the big pink boxes, um, inflatable box things, um, big marker boys. They're marking the 230 meter line, so that's from the furthest point forward that the crowd can get, basically, our spectators can get, um, which to me look very close indeed. It feels um, like it could be a very nice sort of, um, yeah, seaside shows you often get displays a little bit further out, but in theory, we, sh we should be a little bit closer, which does add a, add a bit more impact when you're a um, spectator here. For us, you'd kind of rather be a bit further back, actually, and go full of telephoto and make it uh, an easier job for the camera operator because he's not having to pan like this. He's just going like this. Um, but enough about the trials and tribulations of pointing cameras at aeroplanes. Uh, don't get me started. I will go on all day. So just a reminder, if you're just tuning in, I'll give you a little run through what we're expecting. So somewhere over here, the gravity guys with their jetpacks will be launching at about quarter past seven, so around about 17 minutes time. Um, they're kicking things off. We'll have a little gap between each display, so I might pop on and uh, say hello. I should say at this point, actually, that Joe McGrath is going to be commentator. He'll take you through the main flying display, and I'll be downstairs pushing buttons. But I do like to check in with the chat and say hello. So if you've got any questions or um, just want to say hello, do so in the chat. I will keep a close eye on it. So I was running through the running order. Gravity kicking things off. Then we have the auto gyro. Peter Davis, um, that's going to be cool here. He's allowed to get nice and close in. Lovely display. Uh, he's got the got the big orange gloves going, and he'll be uh, waving to everyone with both hands sometimes. That's terrifying, but that looks great. And then RAF Typhoon. So eight o'clock. So we're into the you know real twilight zone here. So what this means, and you'll be familiar with this if you watch our Bournemouth coverage. At that time of day, the reheat really pops. You know, it's a very striking um, setting, that kind of low light, twilight time of the day to see a fast jet perform. The reheat popping, the jet looking glorious, hopefully. A little back, little backlit, but the sun will be a lot much lower. And um, yeah, that warm evening light helping things as well. Then we have the airborne pyrotechnics guys. So they displayed at the um, Duxford Flying Evening. Pot potentially you watched our live broadcast of that. Um, wonderful display, very atmospheric with the pyros uh, accompanied by music here. You might be able to hear that I've got, they've got a very, very good sound system here. So that's making things a little bit challenging for me because we're not allowed to output commercial music on YouTube. So we're doing battle with that one. Um, so you might hear me bringing in hopefully nice, but not commercial music. Uh, dur during the uh, flying display or certainly in between the gaps if they're pumping out music as loud as they are doing at the moment. Um, so that's the airborne pyrotechnics. So Tim and Tom G's wonderful display. These, the audience here are going to love it, I'm sure. 
Um, and then closing out the evening flying display tonight to this angle. So behind Adrian over here in the um, little area in the middle of the low green, we have at least one uh, hot air balloon. I think we were promised to, but I can only see one being set up at the moment. So they'll be carrying out a alu alu illumination. What's the word? They'll be uh, inflating their hot air balloons, and we will witness in night at night. So the the light will be very low. The burners going and lighting up all the surroundings, lighting up the balloon themselves. So that will bring our uh, live stream this afternoon, this evening to a close and um, we will wind up our coverage at that point and we'll knock down and head off and try and find some late dinner uh, and uh, get a good night's sleep in time for tomorrow's live broadcast which kicks off around about one o'clock and tomorrow's I should run you through it again so we have gravity again and I know I've done it already but people are joining the stream all the time so I'll do it again we have Team Raven and the Gazelle Formation fly past. That's the two teams together. So Team Raven, the RV8s, and the Gazelles flying together. Haven't seen that. That's going to be cool. Have seen Team Raven before. They'll be doing their own display. And a wonderful at one it is, too. I'm not sure I've seen the Strike Masters this year. They're on next. Then the Chinook. OV10 Bronco. The BBMF with two Spitfires. The Red Devils haven't worked out where they are dropping yet we do have this sort of arena set up here so potentially that but as i say the beach is also closed so that feels like an option as well don't know what the plan is there then we have uh, uh the auto gyro back then airborne pyrotechnics back then gazelle formation doing their own thing then starlings who we've seen at uh, bournemouth last weekend uh, the let me get this right. We have the extra and we have the Cat 232 um, displaying together. Really nice formation routine, then individual solo aerobatics, superb performance. Then the Replica SC 5A, it's an aircraft we're used to seeing at, at shows up here in Scotland. Um, Rolls Royce Heritage pair. I saw someone in the chat mention it's listed as Spitfire and Harvard, I think, but um, that would be an odd one for the Rolls Royce, for Rolls Royce to operate, but it's conceivable i suppose um then we have RAF typhoon and then we have the red arrows so i'm expecting the heritage pair to be spitfire and mustang same as it was last week and i'm i'm not actually that i mean they're the only aircraft i've seen the team come under the rolls royce heritage flight um display team so um that's what i would expect to see there so yeah that all taking us through to around about six o'clock and then I think about packing down and driving all the way to Devon to on Sunday. That will be fun. So who's in the chat? It's always really nice to see everyone hopping into the chat. It is a friendly place for like-minded aviation enthusiasts to enjoy. <laughs> uh, the two mic question is a regular one. So this one I'm using to communicate with the camera operators. And this one I'm using to talk to you. Um, I come up with a cunning plan. I don't need to talk to them at the moment. Um, to link those two so I don't look so ridiculous with two microphones but that's our talkback system that's our nice clean audio coming through to you so um, there's, there's better and cleverer ways of doing this but I'm not better or clever enough so um, you'll, you'll just have to suffer me wearing two microphones occasionally um, uh, that's good to hear that you can't hear the PA uh, it was worth spending 300 quid on this microphone after all I can see Chris joining the chat. Wonderful, Chris. Often available to moderate for us. Ever grateful for your service and promoting the streaming service as well. Thank you, Chris. No Sue and uh, no Sukhois. There's no Sues. I see Yada asking. I did see a Sukhoi listed on a flying display recently. Where was that? Oh gosh, I can't think. Could it have been the Belgian show, Kleiner Brogel? Was it possibly NATO days? No, I don't think so. I miss the Sukhoi aerobatic displays. We used to see them in the hands of the likes of Paul Bonham, Steve Jones as the Matadors. Um, gosh, I'm trying to drag some main names from my memory and failing miserably. But um, yeah, I don't see the Sukhoi aerobatic aircraft out on the circuit often anymore. Uh, Gary saying Sue's in the repair shop. Maybe. And people asking about Jersey. What's the question, Andy? We are, yeah. So if you if you just joined and are asking about Jersey, yes, we are covering Jersey. So we'll be live on Thursday afternoon from the island. 
that won't be myself. So it's we've kind of split the air tattoo team up and uh, half are going to Jersey on Thursday and we'll cover Duxford at the weekend after that. Hope that ferry gets there. And uh, Andy and myself will be heading out to NATO Days in Czechia for the NATO Days air show in Ostrava. Um, big NATO show, lots of uh, ground displays, tanks and guys running around uh, getting chased by dogs and all sorts of weird and wonderful uh, displays uh, there. You'll be familiar with that kind of... You may or may not be familiar with uh, the event if you follow Planes TV. We don't output a huge amount on our own service. It goes out on the NATO Days channel on YouTube. The stream, the um, live broadcast does. We'll be providing a camera to that, but we will be producing the little highlight clips for the event, providing those production services. Uh, it's just myself and Andy. Those are long days, let me tell you, but it's a wonderful show to cover. Very grateful for um, the opportunity to go and help the guys out in Ostrava. So, Jelly Dude, hopefully that answers your question about the Jersey Air Show. Yes, we're covering it on Thursday. So make sure you're subscribed. And uh, at some point, I'll get around to scheduling that on the service. And you can set a little reminder if you want to. Yeah, Gareth, Gareth mentioning... Um, that he's surprised we're not seeing any drone displays at these evening displays that we have. And th you do see some remarkable ones, don't you? Um, I say you see. I've not witnessed one yet, which is a bit crazy because they are becoming more common. Um, it would be a really cool thing to see at a uh, nighttime show. There is this sort of culture clash between drones and air shows. So it would be illegal for me to launch a Mavic right now and do some nice air airborne shots. I think it would be, um, certainly during a flying display. You know, the idea that a drone might be launched, it would just it would disrupt the flying display. So I think there's a, there's a little bit of that. I think maybe maybe people are coming around to the idea, but um, certainly when I've t talked to air shows in the past, there is that perception of, uh, of drones. But of course, we know yeah, that they can be um, a, quite a spectacle in the sky, those mass uh, formations of drones creating, creating shapes. It would be a nice thing to see. So maybe one day. I see that was a question from Gareth, or really a, a comment from Gareth saying he's surprised we don't see any. Harry Paul saying, welcome to our little sector of the Scottish sky. Have a good one down at the green. Thank you very much, Harry Paul. We are doing so far. We've been very, made very welcome. Wonderful team here at uh, the International Air Show. And that works better on paper than it does me telling you it now. The Festival of Flight. Um, run by South Ayrshire Council, who who we are here at the invitation of. And, uh, yeah, very grateful for them having us here. It's been many years since we've made it up this way. So, yeah, fantastic to drag the trailer up over the border and um, spend some time in Scotland. And well done to them for putting, to, get, to getting the show going, you know, um, and bringing together a fantastic flying display. Um, some names you may be familiar with, Jeff Coxon, run, a, run Skylab. He's sort of taken on the mantle of the air show here. And um, who else can I tell you? Uh, probably not many more people I can uh, mention, but, um, uh, you know, a really good team. And um, it's definitely in good hands, the council. Uh, it, it's not often you, you have so many... Um, points of contact who all know what they're doing and uh, cracking on and asking all the right questions and uh, it fills you with a lot of confidence when you're coming. It might sound, it might look like an easy thing to do, but outside broadcasts can be a bit of a challenge and um, everything's working smoothly so far. Find the wood. There it is. Um, that's nice to see so many locals joining the chat. I mean, yeah, why not? There is, um, if you are local and you're watching the stream... You might notice there's a slight delay. We do put a little bit of a buffer in there just in case of an incident that we don't really want to go out. Um, we can avoid doing so. And Andrew, and, uh, Andrew who um, was uh, producing, technical directing our uh, Bournemouth output last weekend, who will be out in Jersey and will be looking after you for the Duxford Air Show next weekend. I can see him in the chat. And he's saying, I know there's a couple of teams in the UK that have been up to do up that have been set up to do those drone formation displays, but only public display I'm aware of was, I think, New Year's one done by a European team. There was one at Western Supermare. Um, I'm looking at my, my dad who's down that way. A drone 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 display at Western uh, not long ago, wasn't there? Is that my imagination? There was. 
Yeah, when they had the sea monster, the old oil rig that was um, placed out there, they had a drone show as well. Not sure who that is, so perhaps we just don't have any. Well, there, there must be a one or two, as Andrew says. I haven't had a deep fried Mars bar yet, Biggles. Thank you for that question. I haven't, had, I haven't even had me tea. Um, what do we manage at lunchtime? A Tesco meal deal? Premier in finest last night meal. Um, so we haven't done any authentic Scottish cuisine. Sure, I've got to have some haggis at some point. I managed some black pudding this morning, but that's not quite the same. Ah, now I'm hungry. I really shouldn't have started talking about food. Do you know, we haven't got long to go looking at the time. So I mentioned earlier that I won't be taking you through the flying display proper. Um, I'll be handing over to Joe McGrath, who will um, be the Escher commentator. I need to get back downstairs, so I'll probably um, ask Andy to unmute the Escher commentator, and he'll hop on the mic at some point. And I'll say, do join the chat. I'll be monitoring it through the display, and I'll maybe hop on now and then to say to answer any questions and to give any shout-outs, certainly to any new members. And I did notice one. Forgive me. Your name was uh, Gary. Thank you, Gary, for joining us as a, as a supporter here on YouTube. That helps us uh, immensely and it c encourages me to come and do more of these free to view stuff on you free to view broadcasts on youtube um, i know we did do on uh, just just for members last sunday as well so gary you can go back and watch sunday's bournemouth show if you're that interested but don't do it now we're about to see the flying um yeah so uh evening emma love to see you there and uh jillian if you're around thank you for coming and saying hello she's been in the chat at previous shows saying oh, are you coming to air and the answer was always yes, and she came and said uh, hello earlier, so hello back. And so you've got, I can see Ethan giving you the times. Right, just a couple of minutes to go, so I think I'll sign off, get Joe's mic up, and he can uh, explain to you what's going on, and I'll pop on later. Thanks very much for tuning in. Do make sure to subscribe, give this video a like, and if you do, want, if you do like what we output, do make sure to sign up for the email newsletter. There's a link in the description below. It's me sending it. You can reply to it, it comes direct to me, and you can tell me what a terrible job of presenting the air show uh, this year I've done, or you know, whatever you want to say to me, you can. So, thanks very much. I'll hand over to Joe, and I'll pop back on later on.
So if you're wondering what on earth's going on, um, you're not the only ones. So the gravity guys are um, doing a demonstration out over the way somewhere. Adrian's heard them. Uh, I've, I've, I've been given a rough description of where it's going, but um, uh, what's he found? Has he spotted them? Certainly lots of people heading towards the front there. Um, we haven't got eyes on the gravity guys, but my understanding is that they're not actually doing a a flight, more of a hop. Um, I'll try and get a better idea of exactly where they are doing their thing and a bit of like get a better view for you tomorrow. Um, yeah, and Joe, uh, as your commentator, uh, not um, commentating at the moment, so I thought I'd hop back on just to explain roughly what's going on. I hope it's not... Uh, and um, we've got music over the PA speakers, and they are beauties, those PA speakers you can see in Andy's shot there. Uh, this is sort of stadium uh, concert style speakers, and they do kick out some beautiful sounding music, which I can't bring you on YouTube. So I'm juggling the levels here to make sure that we don't um, output any of that, because YouTube hates it, dislikes it very much indeed. Um, yeah, so Adrian shot there. Ah, we can see kids playing. We heard a uh, gravity jetpack, but um, yeah, no sign. So sorry, we can get you a clearer view of what are the whatever they were up to. But uh, hopefully, we can get a um, get a bit of a better idea of what they're doing. Ready for tomorrow's kick off around about one o'clock. They are doing the same again. Um, but if they've 
done much over there. I'm afraid um, we haven't seen it. So sorry, I couldn't give you a clear review of that. And Adrian's, um, Adrian's, Adrian's suggesting that maybe something might still be occurring. So I'm going to leave you on his angle there. Good shot of an ice cream van, which we always like on Planes TV. Um, the main flying display starting in around about 15 minutes time um, with the Orsagaro. So um, do stick around. The action's coming very shortly. Who have we got in the chat there? Do join the chat. It's a fun way to uh, spend an evening in this case. With like-minded aviation enthusiasts sharing stories. It's always lovely to read, which I am doing now in the production trailer underneath where the, the cameras are. Uh, here we go. And uh, we're expecting the imminent arrival of the first flying display uh, for this weekend's International Air Show Festival of Flight. Welcome, everybody. My name is Joe McGrath. I'm your show commentator for the weekend. And uh, tonight's entertainment is very shortly to begin. We're going to start with uh, an autogyro, unique form of uh, transport in the aviation world. And uh, I'll go talk in more detail once he arrives on scene. And then after that, uh, the front line of the Royal Air Force is, is represented by the Blackjack Typhoon display. And uh, just a little warning, if you've got young kids, it is very, very loud. Um, so uh, be warned of that. And then as the sun sets, but not before it sets, because it's very important from a legal point of view, you're not allowed to display aircraft in the dark, but you can just in that twilight zone. And we're going to use that uh, to show you the airborne pyrotechnics of the Grob 109, a pair of motorized gliders that will come in and they will fly in front of us with the fireworks on the aircraft. So uh, it's meant to be on fire, don't worry. It's going to be doing some amazing, very graceful maneuvers with the fireworks and to music as well. So. Uh, it's a lot going on in the sky. Just to give you an update on tomorrow, if you're coming back for uh, the flying display, uh, you might have heard those turbine jets, and that was Gravity, the jetpack guys. And uh, they were doing a display up at the top right-hand corner of the dis uh, flight line. But tomorrow, they're actually opening the show in the main arena. So uh, get over to the main arena around 20 past 1, and uh, you'll be able to see those jetpacks to full effect. Uh, then we're going to have Team Raven and the Gazelle Squadron doing a fly past. Uh, Team Raven are a, uh, the UK's only um, private display team now, uh, flying all V8s, and uh, they'll be taking the skies at 2 o'clock. Then uh, we're going to be doing something unique uh, in uh, deference to the STEM uh, theme of this show, trying to move uh, forward with new engineering, new ideas. Um, I have uh, arranged for the first time ever in the world, we're going to have an AI doing the commentary for the Strike Master aircraft. So uh, it's a world first. We have contacted the Guinness Book of Records. Apparently, we're going to be in it. Uh, so we're going to be doing that uh, tomorrow. Uh, for the Strike Master. Then the uh, Chinook, we had Ben, uh, Flight Sergeant Ben, uh, over earlier on. He was telling us about the Chinook. That will be doing its full display. Uh, another great uh, display after that, the OV-10 Bronco, one of my favorite aircraft. Uh, will be here just before uh, 3 o'clock. And then at 3 o'clock, one of the highlights, one of the many highlights of tomorrow, the Battle of Britain Memorial flight. Lancaster, Spitfire, and Hurricane will be flying over the Firth of Forth right in front of us. Uh, then the Red Devils. Uh, the parachute display team from Two Para. Uh, I did a jump with them years ago uh, down in Aldershot and instantly regretted it when I left the aircraft. But uh, you'll see the professionals do it tomorrow. And then uh, the Calidus Auto Gyro uh, that we're about to see, he'll be back tomorrow afternoon about 3.30. Then uh, Airborne Pyrotechnics, again, we're going to see them tonight. Uh, they'll be coming up to about 4 o'clock. And then at 4 o'clock we have the Gazelle Squadron, and uh, we're also going to be having the SE-5 uh, World War I biplane, the Rolls-Royce Heritage flight, uh, the Spitfire is coming in, the Typhoon uh, is going to be coming as well, and then closing the show after 5 o'clock will be the Red Arrows. Wow, look at that sunshine. That is so cool. Uh, so very shortly, in about 15 minutes, uh, we'll be welcoming in the Autogyro, 
and uh, I'll tell you a little bit more about that once it's arrived. Uh, lots of people have been hitting me up on Instagram, uh, Joe Air Show, and uh, I got a request from uh, Dylan Conkey. Can you say hi to Evan Campbell? Well, that was short and sweet. Yeah, of course I can. No problem. Hello to Devin. And uh, also, Crazy Kev is out there. Uh, he's enjoying the evening with Liz, eating some chippies next to the third speaker on the right. And uh, apparently he's uh, enjoying the show. If you want to say hello to somebody, uh, give me a shout out on Instagram at Joe Air Show. So uh, I'll be back in about 10 minutes' time and hopefully coming in from your right-hand side. So look off to your right, you'll see it. Uh, will be the auto gyro. Yeah, so that's uh, Joe McGrath. He will be taking you through um, flying displays in just a little while. Or a question on the chat. Let me see if I can find it. I think it was Max someone. I don't even know if it was a question for me. Just reduce that music a little bit. Try and have a proper chat with you guys. I can see you all in the chat. It's lovely to see. Thank you, Chris. And thank you, Monty, for gifting five Planes TV memberships. Who's regularly done this, and I'm very grateful for you doing so. And who's ended up with them? It's quite fun seeing who ends up with them. See if their names I recognise. I can see Lauren and Patrick and Rich and Les and and Darren as well. I've all received a membership. Thank you so much, um, Monty. Always very grateful for your support. Yeah, I see Jonathan uh, get, getting excited about the AI. Yes, yeah, so Adrian is very excited about that too. Um, Joe having... Uh, my understanding is that he's yeah, created this script for the uh, display using uh, ChatGPT or something. So yeah, very interested in, to see what that, how that comes out. Um, who else is in the chat? Just a few more minutes to go, about 10 minutes to go till our first flying display, which will be the auto gyro, which is going to look pretty special with this sun setting behind it, making it quite challenging for the camera operators. So if you're operating full telephoto and you're going to point it at the sun, you sort of start to think, yeah, what am I, how am I going to expose this shot? Because uh, it's basically a silhouette. I think that's just what we have to accept. Uh -huh. See people talking about Bucky. Now I've come up from that neck of the woods. Bucky Wine. Yeah, the RF Lucas Air Show, Derek mentioning. If you've been with us since the beginning of this stream, I dug out a little bit of our archive content from 2012, the RF Lucas Air Show. That's the year before the final RF Lucas Air Show. And I showed a, um, a Vulcan uh, clip from that year. I might as well show you it again. Um, is that a bit daft? Or shall I show you some Lucas 2013? I'll leave it up to you. Tell me, ladies and gents, would you like to see RAF Lucas 2012, the Vulcan display? Or would you like to see the finale of RAF Lucas 2013, the, how the very last RAF Lucas air show finished? These are segments from our edited program that went out on DVD and Blu-ray and are now available on our streaming service at watch.planestv.com. Um, yeah, it's up to you. Do you want to see Lucas 2012 or 2013? You let me know. They're about four minutes long, so we've got a bit of time. We can get one of those out prior to the flying display starting. To give you a bit of um, time to uh, decide whether you'd like to see the Vulcan display or the closing ceremony of RF Lucas uh, 2013, the final Lucas display, one of the other um, programs we've recently... Actually, we haven't output the program yet. We are editing it at the moment. The Royal International Air Tattoo 2023 um, edited highlights programs under production at the moment. 
but we were live throughout the entire well seven days we were there so you, you might well have watched some of our arrivals or departures um, live broadcasts and we streamed the main flying displays out on our streaming service um, that's watch.planestv.com keep going on about it but yeah if you sign up there it's £10 per month and you can watch back the main flying displays from RAF um, the Royal International Air Tattoo for an idea of what that looked like I'll play you now our highlights from the show he was watching that uh, highlights video earlier and he said it almost makes it look like a sort of summer's day some of that which um, not much of air tattoo was unfortunately it would get pretty wet and pretty breezy at times but some, fam some fabulous flying in between that's a really nice material capture during the arrivals particularly the rehearsal displays some of the material in there and um, making uh, coming from those uh, rehearsals uh, just because it was a bit, bit better weather. So our edited highlights program is under production at the moment and will be available on the streaming service uh, watch.planestv.com yeah, Gearing up for the flying and I offered you either a Vulcan display from 2012 or a um, finale display from Lucas. So two clips I've dug out from our archive um, it's a pretty balanced um, response actually. Lots of people saying love the Vulcan, let's see that, but plenty of people asking for the finale piece. I think we're probably just a touch too close to the autogyro uh, displaying in just five minutes time to hit go on those. Um, but I will, we will have gaps in between some of the displays today. So we're expecting fairly large gaps uh, in between uh, autogyro to, let me just remind myself what the next one was. Okay, yeah, so we've got Typhoon after Autogyro, then the Airborne Pyrotechnics guys, and then completing with the uh, illumination of the two balloons here. So we'll have plenty of time to share either the Vulcan or the um, finale of the very last RF Lucas Air Show, which I've dug out because coming up to Scotland at this time of year just reminds me of those shows that we no longer see. Um, so I need some more votes, please. There's probably a way of doing a vote, isn't there? Oh, do you know? Um, I'll put 2012 Vulcan or 2013 brackets finale. There you go. How do I change the options? Uh, this is not very professional, is it? But um, you get the idea. You can tell that it's me doing it. So I've started a poll. I think that's my first ever. Um, but if you fancy a clip from Lucas, we've got a couple of choices there. 
the Vulcan display from 2012, or the finale of the very last RF Lucas Air Show, and it was a pretty spectacular one with uh, Tornado in formation with Lancaster. Um, I think Tornado and Typhoon also forming up as well, and lots of bagpipes, lots of marching, lots of ceremonial bits on the ground. It's turned into a gorgeous evening here. Very grateful for that. I can see camera one shot at the moment with the boat out there. A couple of jet skis in the background. Not sure. And then Andy shot there. You can see the um, sun going down as the crowd moving around, getting in position, ready for the flying display starting in just a moment. Yeah, see that that boat is coming in pretty well 50/50 at the moment. Well, I'll leave it to run um, through the flying displays this evening and I'll find an opportunity to play one of those clips out. And um, if you're with us from the beginning, you'll have watched the Vulcan already, but this is, yeah, why not play it again? And if you're very familiar with those years, um, camera two's live at the moment, Adrian. Um, if you're familiar with the Lucas displays towards the end, I've got the material available. So if there's something you'd like to see, the uh, Austrian typhoons with their Hercules, perhaps, or um, let me think. I mean, the Red Arrows display is quite nice. So, I can see Adrian's picked up the Autogyro in the Merc over there. So, that's his view of the Autogyro. Um, do you know, look at those seagulls. Every single vantage point in this town has a seagull atop it. Every single lamp uh, down the seafront here seems to. Um, yeah, be adorned with the seagull at the moment. Right, good stuff. What time is it? We are minute three nine. We've got one minute to run. I'm going to open up um, our Jay McGrath, our Escher commentator's microphone. Hope that he's about to hop on and um, yeah, take you through the flying displays. Thanks so much for tuning in. If you're enjoying what you're seeing, do make sure to subscribe here on YouTube. We'll be live again from Jersey on Thursday. Uh, following that, we'll also have live broadcasts from Duxford. That's on the streaming service rather than YouTube. So, um, yeah, sign up at watch.plainstv.com if you'd like to. Well, that, that's watch the last the of the music train. for a few minutes because very shortly we're going to be starting the flying display running in from your right hand side at the controls, Peter Davies. Uh, I'll be monitoring the uh, air show frequency, and he's just been cleared in by the flying control committee and uh, he's going to run in from your right hand side now keep an eye out for this unique aircraft and uh, at the controls as i said peter davies this man has been flying these aircraft for over 40 years so uh, no one more qualified to fly 28 years of that uh, flying this type of aircraft for gyroplanes first issued his uh, gyroplane display authorization back in 1991. Peter has become a display authority evaluator as well. So uh, he's actually uh, qualified to uh, hand out DAs, display authorizations. You can see that unique shape of this flying uh, machine. Some of it will remember it from James Bond, of course. Uh, he made it famous in that movie. And uh, believe it or not, that rotor blade at the top, that's not connected to anything except the uh, hub that it's rotating on. It's not been driven by anything except it actually moving through the air. It's a freewheeling hub and uh, it's just a propeller at the back pushing the aircraft forward that causes that rotation of the blades on the top. So in a very, very stable aircraft and uh, it's impossible to stall because uh, let's say the engine cut out and the propeller stopped turning at the back, and that rotor blade is still gonna start rotating and it'll be just like landing a helicopter. It'll come in under control and uh, it means the aircraft is uh, incredibly safe and as you can see, very agile as well. Peter bringing it in a twisting turn and that rotor blade just freewheeling around at the top. And the aircraft will cruise at about 100 miles an hour. Uh, it's got a V and E, what's called a V and E, which is a velocity never exceed of 120. You don't want to go faster than that, or things will start falling off. But it'll cruise at about 120, 100 miles an hour, 
for about four hours. So you can do 400 miles cross country in this uh, aircraft. It's a two seater, as you can see. It's uh, fully air conditioned. It's got a uh, Garmin flying kick. So uh, it's uh, a nice cross country aircraft, this one. As I said, Peter is very, very experienced. 3,000 hours plus flying gyroplanes. And he's an instructor on these uh, type of aircraft as well. He's uh, won many, many events. Uh, in the aircraft. He was fourth in the first world micro light championships. He's an FAI world distance record holder. Uh, he is uh, first in the world air games uh, and also the which is like the Olympics of aviation and uh, attained fourth in the world discipline in long distance navigation flying uh, a Mooney. So he's also flown a variety of other types of aircraft, hang gliders, Wessex helicopters, the world's largest biplane, which is of course an Antonov AN2. But uh, this is his uh, go-to aircraft at the moment. He says he has an ambition to be the first person to fly this aircraft through the Channel Tunnel. I don't know if that's a great one, but uh, there you go. It's good to have goals. Yeah. So as you can see, the aircraft has a very decent uh, climb rate. And like I said, it's not a powered hub, uh, the rotor blade, but it still can get up there pretty quick. And because of the control and the weight of the aircraft, um, it's got a 200 kilo uh, load that can carry with people and fuel. And the aircraft itself weighs uh, 300 kilos. Um, it's very, very nimble. And because of that, it can get very close. Now, don't be fooled. Uh, when the tornado comes along later, uh, sorry, the typhoon, shows my age there. Um, when the typhoon comes along later, it will not get this close uh, because it's such a bigger, heavier, you know, 25 tons uh, of aircraft that will be a lot further out. But because of the weight, and there he goes, look, Peter waving, both hands off the controls, just uh, steering in. And he, I know he hasn't got autopilot, but uh, still looks good. So give him a wave back. He can definitely see you. Um, and as I said, the typhoon will not be as close as that. Um, great start to uh, our flying display tonight. And uh, a great opening act of the International Air Show Festival of Flight. So Peter's heading back in, what we'll we call the 45, and uh, he's just pitching the aircraft over. Oh, I love that sound, that flapping of the rotor blades. The aircraft is uh, Autogyro uh, Calidus, and uh, it's powered by a Rotex engine. It's only 115 horsepower, so that's not particularly powerful for uh, an aircraft. Most of your cars have more power than that. But your car can't do this. Now this is a little bit of crazy fly. Look, as you rotate the stick, he's moving it. Still moving forward, but using the rudder. moving from left to right as he goes forward. As I said, it's a tandem two-seater aircraft. It was uh, designed in Germany in 2009. Very comfortable inside. As I said, it's, uh, if you want to go cross-country, uh, no better machine. It was certified in the UK in 2011, so still a relatively new airframe. And over a thousand of this uh, aircraft have been sold worldwide. Most gyro planes are open cockpit, and uh, this is why this particular design is so popular. It's an enclosed cockpit. And of course, because of its nature as half helicopter, half uh, aircraft, it has a phenomenally short takeoff and landing distance. It only needs about 10 meters 
to move forward. So 10 meters of roll and it will get airborne uh, depending on the weather conditions. And of course, because it's got that rotating disc at top, it could come straight down. So uh, zero meters uh, to land, it'll land in its own uh, length. It's uh, another selling point for this aircraft, its height and its weight because uh, as most people that have aircraft they know that the bigger your aircraft is the more you're going to pay in hangarage but this aircraft is less than three meters it's less than two meters wide so to be able to put that in a hangar will not cost much at all So Peter's now pitching the aircraft around. Uh, another thing about this aircraft, it's the more traditional style. It has a stick in the center. So um, that is uh, rare now in new aircraft. And normally they have a little side stick, like the Airbus thing. So uh, he has a more traditional layout with the rudder pedals at his feet and uh, the stick in the middle. Now we'll see the slow flight part of the envelope. He pitches the aircraft up, and you'll notice the blade at the top, it's pitched backwards, so that helps the air flow through it. And uh, that's done on purpose, so that it uh, will always be spinning. Um, so it's about a 10 degree pitch of the, uh, the what we call the rotor disc uh, up, so that the air is always flowing through it. So now he's coming in to crowd center. And he's going to dip the aircraft, and this will be his last pass. So that's him saying, cheerio. I'm sure he's going to wave again as he comes down. And uh, he'll do his last pass. As it looks like the sun is doing his last pass as it dips over the Firth of Clyde. So, a very nice and stable opening to our flying tonight. And uh, we're really going to go from one extreme to the other because uh, as Peter pitches the aircraft around and comes back from left to right, give him a wave. I'm sure he'll be waving at you too because uh, coming up next is one of the highlights of the weekend. There he goes. Well done, sir. See you tomorrow. So Peter's going to head back to Presswick. And uh, I know in the overhead, uh, joining us in 10 minutes will be the Royal Air Force Blackjack Typhoon. So, uh, as I said, get ready for that because it is super loud and uh, super entertaining as well. Full reheat. I've never seen this aircraft display in these dust conditions, so you're really going to get some great pictures with the full reheat on uh, and the darkness of the sky. So, 10 minutes time. Royal Air Force with the Blackjack Typhoon.
So we're getting close to the uh, arrival of the aircraft from the Royal Air Forces, the Blackjack Typhoon. Uh, a little bit of housekeeping. As I said, it's a very loud display. So uh, if you have young kids, please uh, make sure they're uh, aware of what's going to happen because it can be, especially in the reheat moments, uh, quite uh, thundery noise. Um, lots of people here today, and uh, myself included, I think I did this when I arrived yesterday, uh, feeding the pigeons and the um, seagulls. Unfortunately, we're trying not to uh, get uh, pigeons and seagulls involved in air shows. That's because if they get ingested into some of the aircraft, it uh, causes a world of pain for everybody. Uh, so please, uh, if you can, keep the seagull uh, feeding down to an absolute minimum. And I'm sure I don't have to say this, but please no drones. Uh, no drones at all uh, around here while there's flying going on. And, uh, we had uh, reported some drones earlier, and um, I know that the people involved with them were dealt with. So uh, if you don't want to lose your drone, please don't fly it while we're flying 25-ton aircraft going at 400 miles an hour around here. So uh, as I said, coming up next is the uh, RAF Typhoon display. And this year's uh, RAF Typhoon display is call sign uh, Anarchy 1. It's piloted by Flight Lieutenant uh, Matt uh, Brightley and a qualified QFI and 29 squadron based out of uh, Oriex Coningsby. Matt joined uh, the Royal Air Force's direct entry back in 2007 and I'm just listening to him on the uh, airshow frequency. He's uh, been cleared in by the Flying Control Committee and uh, he has the full height restrictions lifted on him so we're going to be seeing some zoom climbing as well so as i said matt joined your RAF back in 2007 he uh, underwent elementary flight training on a grob tutor and then he uh, streamed into fast jets uh, linton on news flying the uh, tucano t1 then went on to tactical weapons course in the hawk t1 you can hear him out there so uh, he's out towards the southwest and getting ready to do uh, a transit arrival, which will be a high speed arrival at 500 knots. So get your eyes to the sky. It's uh, poon time, as they say. And I can see that distinctive shape there, my 11 o'clock, moving left to right. I think he's in an orbit, building up the speed. Matt returned back to 29 Squadron in 2020. Uh, he's become a qualified flying instructor. He's responsible for training both air crew and ground crew, and not just from the UK, but, but also partner nations as well. He was selected for this role in October of last year. And uh, when he's not displaying the aircraft, he is teaching uh, frontline Typhoon pilots how to operate the jet. He also contributes to the RAF's Coningsby Primary Task Course, which is the QRA duties, quick reaction uh, alert duties, and uh, that new Channel 4 series that we've all been glued to, uh, Top Guns in the RAF. Uh, you'll know the work that he does. And as you'll see from Matt's display, the Typhoon's immense performance and maneuverability is coupled with weapon capability, making it a clear choice for the Royal Air Force's combat air platform following the retirement of the tornadoes. And uh, under Project Centurion, Typhoon is now a swing-wing combat platform able to conduct both air-to-air -air and air-to-surface. It's designated the Typhoon FGR-4. So if you'd like to find out more about uh, the Typhoon, of course we have a full model uh, in the RAF village, uh, just down in the lower green. And uh, if you go over to see them, uh, they'll be happy to go through it with you. I think you can get your picture taken inside the cockpit as well. So if you like what you see, go over to the RAF village.
the GR4, also going through the uh, upgrade with the radar system. There's a new radar system called Radar 2. And uh, this aircraft was built in a sort of modulus style so that they could upgrade systems without major uh, internal rewirings. And uh, this new Radar 2 system that's going to be coming online over the next couple of years is going to transform this aircraft, nearly doubling its uh, lethality uh, range. So get ready. You can see the light is on coming from the left gives me great pleasure to introduce you to the 2023 Royal Air Force Typhoon display. Arriving at almost 600 miles per hour and just 100 feet above the ground. Anarchy 1 breaks up away from the crowd. First of many 9G turns. Maximum reheat engaged. You saw the aircraft pitch up. 60 degree roll. Now he's coming back. See what I mean by the reheat now and the noise coming from it. Into a wing over. 500 knots in that maneuver, rolls fully inverted before putting the nose steeply down to position back to the crowd line from a corkscrew. Now watch the cannons at the front, and rolls the aircraft. And into a double corkscrew. rolling the aircraft out gives the illusion of that typhoon is skidding through the sky now watch again reheat engaged Fast pass. Now down on the 45, rolling the aircraft, and then he's putting hard back. Good 9G load there at the bottom, then light the candle, and then straight out in crowd center. Aileron roll and then pitch the aircraft up into the vertical. You can see that phenomenal roll rate and uh, the fly-by-wire system helping him keep the aircraft under control at all times. He's using a HOTAS hands-on throttle. So with his left hand, he's able to engage multiple systems on the aircraft while doing a slow roll, slow speed pass. Very difficult to do that and keep the aircraft level. A lot of work with your feet on the rudder pedals. So get ready for uh, the slower part of his envelope now. This is called a slow speed loop. He'll make use of the staggering excess power and select full reheat. Once he enables that, he'll climb vertical into a slow speed loop. So this is what we call Max Alpha. If you have binoculars, you'll be able to see the canals at the front moving rapidly 
They do uh, 6,000 decisions a second with four computers playing each other. There's a reheat. As I said, there was the reheat as he uh, positioned the aircraft back up and instantly speeding back up to 600 miles an hour. Now watch as he drops the aircraft back down into what's called a max rate turn. Half horizontal with a knife edge hold. So he's carried all that speed through, turning it through a 360 right in front of you, sustaining 9G, so nine times his body weight, pushing him back into the aircraft. And there he goes. Pulling back, 9G load, and he wants to come around as quick as he can and exit this 360 exactly where he entered. He's pitching the aircraft up, up into a barrel roll. Into knife edge on the way down. So uh, half Cuban. And then into a Derry turn. So we're coming towards the closing sequences. Heading back along the crowd line, Matt's going to descend to 100 feet and increase the speed to 500 knots before pulling 9G one more time and then up into the vertical. And he's going to rocket skywards just a couple of seconds and he'll be up at about 10,000 feet. And there he goes, rolling away. It looks like he's going to come back crowd center before he does his vertical penetration. Get your cameras ready. to say a special thanks to the uh, partners that make this display possible BA Systems uh, Leonardo, Rolls-Royce, Breitling Squadron Prince, uh, Toomey Leasing Group and Lincoln Tea and Coffee all sponsors of uh, the Typhoon Display team and there we go into the bright blue, well not so bright anymore because it's going into darkness but into the blue yonder and straight up wow, what a display so uh, a big thanks to uh, the whole team and uh, that was the 2023 Royal Air Force Typhoon display, thank you all for your support and uh, thanks to their team sponsors as well I told you it was good. Well worth coming to. Now, uh, we've still got a few activities down on the ground. Uh, I know that there's going to be uh, some ballooning activity in the main arena. And uh, we hope to see you all back here tomorrow. Flying starts at 13.20 uh, with the Gravity Industries. And if you want to see the uh, uh, Royal uh, Air Force again, uh, they will be displaying again tomorrow. Uh, we have the Battle of Britain Memorial flight. And uh, we also have the Canadian, uh, sorry, the Gazelle Squadrons. Uh, we've got Rolls-Royce with the Heritage Flight, the 
Typhoon is going to be flying again about 20 past five in the afternoon. And of course, the Red Arrows uh, will be finishing the show. Uh, in the meantime, I uh, hope you relax and uh, enjoy the rest of the events we've got on the ground here for you. And uh, we'll see you back here tomorrow. And, uh, oh, Pyrotech, sorry. Thank God for the Flying Control Committee, because they've just said, don't forget that aerosol pyrotechnics are still going to be displaying. So we have one more flying display for us, the Airborne Pyrotechnics, the Grob 109 with the pyrotechnics on board. They'll be coming in very shortly, and uh, we'll be playing some music to sit back and relax as day goes tonight, and uh, we'll be flying in the dusk and uh, we'll be enjoying the Grob 109. We're just waiting for them to come on frequency, and uh, they'll be seeing us through to about 20 past, or about half past eight, and then that will be the end of the flying display. Thank you, Les, and the team, uh, who are doing a great job. They're uh, the Flying Control Committee, so they're the people liaising with the CAA and uh, all of the pilots and Prestwick Airport, who uh, have been great supporters of this show. Uh, helping us immensely, not just uh, taking the aircraft, landing them, refueling them, but also providing uh, all the help with the air TC. And uh, without ATC's help, of course, this uh, display would be impossible. So thanks to Presswick and to the uh, Flying Control Committee. So Airborne Pirate Technics will be on their way very shortly. Look out for the grobs. Uh, so they don't just have fireworks on them, they also have LED lights on the actual aircraft. So uh, it's a unique display and it works best in this light. They'll be coming on stream in about 10 minutes time. So uh, get yourselves ready for airborne pyrotechnics at 20 past eight.
If you're just tuning in, wondering what's going on, thank you very much for doing so. My name's Ian. I'm down in the trailer live mixing what you're watching. Um, yeah, we've got uh, PA speakers outputting music, so I'm outputting my own over the top and hiding in my trailer. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you look up to the right in what we call our one o'clock position, uh, you'll see that uh, the Grop aircraft are uh, in the hold. They're going to come straight into the middle of us. And uh, these aircraft are what are called the Grop 109. It's uh, a motorized glider, so uh, quite a decent wingspan, over 17 meters. And uh, it's fitted with a two and a half liter flat four based on a Volkswagen engine, just 95 horsepower, but it can glide 28 to at once. So that's a, a very productive wing, generating lots of lift. Uh, it can fly for six hours on one uh, fuel tank and cruise at about 85 knots. These aircraft have been flying up to 13,000 feet uh, over Mount Cook in New Zealand. They were aircraft were built back in 1985 and they have a lifespan of about 12,000 flying hours. That's a lot for uh, an airframe. Uh, the, it can fold the wings, which is handy when you want to put it into a hangar. And as a, a JR-22 aircraft, it's stressed to uh, 5.2 G, which is a lot for a glider. So you can see the lights coming on and on. Now, uh, we'll watch this to the music as selected by the pilots. And uh, so sit back, relax, and enjoy the graceful maneuvers of the Grob 109.
So uh, get ready, ladies and gentlemen, as they come in for their last pass. They're going to give you a little wing wave. So please do wave back. They can see you. Well, that was a pretty amazing uh, display. And uh, in this unique environment, you can see the aircraft uh, fully lit up with the LEDs, but also producing their own fireworks as well. Um, Airborne Pyrotechnics are uh, sponsored by Sydney Charles Aviation Insurance Services, and it's a father and son team. Uh, Tim Jews is the father, and he grew up flying on Duxford Airfield. And uh, his son Tom is uh, joining him as well tonight. Amazing display. Thank you both, gentlemen. And uh, that as I said, brings together the uh, end of our flying display. So, uh, Ben and uh, Tim, thank you very much. And uh, we will see you again tomorrow uh, at uh, an earlier day. So don't forget, we have some uh, hot air balloons activity going on in the uh, main arena behind the commentary booth here. Uh, head over there and uh, look at some night glow activities. Uh, we hope you enjoyed today. Uh, the first flying part of our weekend here, flying at the Air Show International Festival of Flight. Uh, it's been my pleasure being your commentator, and uh, I'll see you again tomorrow morning, and we'll uh, do it all over again. And uh, I'll be on air from about 10 o'clock in the morning. Hope you have a good uh, Friday night, and see you tomorrow.
So if you've been enjoying what you're seeing, thank you very much for tuning in. Do give the video a like and do subscribe to us here on YouTube. We'll be live again tomorrow at one o'clock. We'll, we'll be live this evening. We're going to stay live with this balloon, which is about to get uh, lit up by its own burner, which is going to be very dramatic. Um, so do stay with us if you'd like to see that. And um, tomorrow we'll have, uh, gosh, what will we have? Gazelle Squadron with Team Raven flying a big formation of helicopters and the Team Raven RV-8s as well. Um, let me bring up the running order. I can run you through what we're expecting. Yeah, the Strike, pa Strike Master Pair, Chinook, OV-10 Bronco, two Spitfires of the Battle of Britain Memorial Flight, Red Devils, Autogyro again. Pyro team we've just seen, the Airborne Pyrotechnics guys displaying without the, without the Pyros tomorrow. Equally good display. Well, actually, the, the fireworks do add an awful lot, don't they? That was pretty special just then. Gazelle, form, Gazelle Squadron um, displaying on their own, having done the formation thing with Team Raven earlier on. There we go, there's that burner. Look at that, spectacular. That'll do it. Very nice. So everyone uh, having come off the the very front here now enjoying the sight, moving as you can see on camera two there. If he can focus his camera, moving off the beach to come and witness this beautiful hot air balloon. Not going to launch, not intending to anyway, just lighting up, illuminating the balloon. As a bit of a spectacle here on the low green in air. I'll just finish what we're expecting to see tomorrow with the uh, Starlings, the SE5A replica, Rolls Royce Heritage pair, expecting Spitfire Mustang, um, RAF Typhoon, and then the Red Arrows closing out the show. So, yeah, tune in tomorrow from about one. Um, we live all afternoon till about six o'clock. Well, some gorgeous sights here. Oh, I'm afraid I'll subject you to some more of my stock music because I can't add this stuff coming out over the um, PA speakers. I want to leave you with the sight. And um, I was going to say sound, but I can't even bring you my effect mics because my the beautiful PA speakers here, sort of stadium quality concert spe speakers, are uh, just a bit too much for... Um, uh, for us to avoid picking up, and I can't air commercial music over YouTube because YouTube don't like it. So enjoy a bit more of my music as we witness this um, balloon illumination. Thank you ever so much for tuning in, everybody. It's been a fun evening here in air. Wonderful to be back at a Scottish air show. And that vote earlier on, it was pretty well 50-50, but it was coming out top for the... Uh, 2012 clip. I never actually found the chance to play it, so I'll, I'll output them both at some point during tomorrow's broadcast. I didn't say who knows what can happen, Brendan. I just said, not intending to launch. Or I don't think I said that, anyway. Um, I'm assuming the balloon's tethered, so uh, I did a bit of um, work with the balloon a few weeks ago. And uh, yeah, tends the style seems to be to tether it to a Land Rover. Seems to be the object of choice.
thank you ever so much everybody for tuning in we've been Plains TV we'll be back again from around about one o'clock here in air um, really great seeing so many of you joining today's broadcast there's obviously great interest in a, a Scottish air show as there well should be uh, looking forward to a action-packed uh, day tomorrow afternoon so do make sure to subscribe give this video a like and you'll see already the video for tomorrow's schedule so you can um, go and set a reminder on YouTube if you'd like to do that. Thanks very much for tuning in everybody. I'll catch up with you again tomorrow. My name's been Ian. We've had Adam. We haven't had Adam. <laughs> Adam's in France, but we've had Adrian and we've had Andy on camera. And we've really enjoyed bringing you a Scottish Air Show this evening. We'll have much more to come tomorrow from around about one. Thanks for tuning in. Goodbye.